Hello. Uh, welcome to Friday morning sessions. Uh, welcome to the academic uh, session uh, for Post 4G Friday morning. Um, I'm Can, uh, Can Hunan from Istanbul, Turkey. Um, I'm a member of OpenStreetMap, global OpenStreetMap communities. Uh, I'm also lecturing at Met University in Istanbul, Turkey. So uh, I'm very uh, excited about the academic track today. I will have a chance to um, watch and, 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 and um, see lots of interesting academic talks here as well. I'm hoping that you are uh, feeling the same. Uh, we are going to start now with our first uh, session. Imsili uh, Kale, Imsilanga from Tanzania. Uh, the title is Resilience Academy Student Internship Model as an Innovative Way to Enhance Geospatial Literate Future Workforce in Africa. Uh, Imsili Kale has been working at the World Bank since 2011 as a geospatial and community mapping specialist. He's now at the University of Turku as a project manager coordinating four Tanzanian universities to deliver resilience academy programs. And he was also a co-chair of FOS4G in 2018 in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. So, uh, Msili Kale, welcome. How are you today? Thank you. How are you, Khan? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine as well. Thank you. So, I'm removing myself and, and, and the screen is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you. Thank you so much, Khan. Um, hi, everybody. So as I was being introduced, um, my name is Msidika Silanga, and I um, uh, have been working with the World Bank and I've been also a co-chair of FOS4G 2018 in Dar es Salaam. Um, and today I'm going to be presenting um, to you the paper that we wrote um, called Resilience Academy um, student internship model as an innovative way to enhance um, just partial literature future work uh, force in Africa. Um, this paper was written uh, based on the experiences um, that was done um, in Tanzania uh, in the with the Resilience Academy program and other uh, projects that was done in the World Bank in Tanzania um, since 2009, uh, 2018. Um, but the experiences comes way back um, since 2016, uh, when the, there was a lot of piloting of using students uh, for doing data collection and also providing skills based on the, uh, on the, on the um, training that was done. So to begin, uh, I will start by saying that, um, so Africa is, uh, is growing uh, very fast. I would say so. Like two um, two thirty of the uh, African population um, is uh, moving to urban urban cities. Therefore, the cities uh, are increasing uh, very rapidly um, in uh, African cities uh, because uh, and most of the population that are, are moving to the cities um, mostly are young people, uh, and they are moving to the cities because they are looking for opportunities, etc. So therefore, um, the cities are, are growing rapidly um, and it's expected to be expanding by, by 2035. Um, so because of this, a uh, few challenges are coming, uh, are coming um, alongside that. Um, because of that, then, you know, the, the data is, because of the city are changing very rapidly, uh, it's very difficult to, to know or to keep up with the data. The availability of data is becoming a challenge um, to know, you know, the number of people, the number of infrastructure, the number of uh, etc. So it's very difficult to know uh, because of that. And also because of, of that, um, there is a scarcity of local knowledge um, to know what's going on. You know, the, the people who are in the city experiencing with, you know, they are, they are the ones who are experiencing these challenges uh, in the city. Um, so, uh, and because they are, they, they, their experiences or their knowledge is, is difficult, not, is not being included um, in making this kind of um, designing or solutions and because the cities are increasing very fast. 
and also the the uh, the digital skills also becoming a challenge. Um, uh, but all the challenges are coming up with the current opportunities that that there is. Um, we can see that uh, nowadays there's a lot of um, disrupt disruptive uh, technologies that are aiming to solve the challenges that are that are occurring uh, in the cities. Um, you know, we have a lot of low cost and complexity tools that have been developed um, around the world. Um, these are uh, open source um, community available that help to develop different type of technologies um, to help, you know, solve these challenges that we face. And there's a vastly uh, possibility of partnership um, worldwide to try to understand the challenges that we face and also the um, um, getting the solutions um, uh, around the challenges that are available. Um, taking an example of the city where I am from, um, the city called Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam is one of the of the very rapidly growing cities in Africa, and um, because of that, you know, more than uh, almost uh, eighty percent percent of the of the of the cities are planned. You have a lot of informal settlements growing uh, vastly, um, and therefore there's a lot of challenges that are happening because of that, um, like flooding, um, you know, traffic jam, you know, these common problems that are happening in Africa. Uh, at the same time, uh, Dar es Salaam is one of the cities that, you know, the, this lack of data, um, especially if you want to know the data that can help solving the, or understanding the problems. Um, and uh, and this is all because the city is growing really fast. You know, each year uh, it's changing rapidly. So it's, if you collect the data today, uh, next year today it might be different. So it need a lot of data updating, data collection every time. Um, and and also in Dar es Salaam also, you know, the local knowledge um, it has been a challenge to involve local knowledge in in, in developing solutions or plans uh, in this case. Therefore, a lot of solutions that are brought uh, from external are really not sustained because if you're not involved the local, uh, the solution comes and then when when the, the uh, international community goes, then the local you know the solution does not sustain. So there's less uh, local knowledge and efficient feedback, um, which really could help sustainability of the of the project or solutions that have been developed. At the same time, um, the skill uh, of young people. Um, you know, it's 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 scarce um, to understand solutions that have been developed, so that this so this um, you know local skills could could be available to help sustain or develop more solutions and and keep the um, you know the solution going uh, to 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 diminish or remove the the challenges that are available in in, in Dar es Salaam. Uh, and as I say, the sustainability become challenge because you don't have skills um, and then you don't have uh, the knowledge of the solution that has been brought. So all the solutions that have been uh, play, uh, in place, therefore do not really sustain uh, longer. Uh, so Resilience Academy uh, project, as I, I originally said, um, uh, has an approach where, a, you know, the, the, the young students are being trained with different um, technology skills, um, knowledge and skills uh, with different tools like open source tools in order to address the, um, the challenges that are happening locally. You know, so trying to find um, local tools, open source tools uh, that could be easily adaptable to help these young people understand um, based on the challenges that are available. And this has also been highlighted in the um, in the SDG4 um, to uh, quality learning opportunities of all. So, so, so Resilience Academy is trying to, to get every, every young people um, in Tanzania to be able to uh, get skills uh, and be able to experience the challenge that are very available and provide solution for that. So Resilience Academy is working um, with four Tanzanian universities um, and they're expanding. And we are partnering with um, with University of, uh, of Twenty in Netherlands and Delft University um, of Technology. Uh, and, and these universities, they are equally um, being able to 
provide these skills and also participate in different resilience academy activities locally um, as a way to um, to to participate, but uh, at the same time as a way to 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 to, to make it the university um, being able to to provide these kind of skills uh, in a, in a, for for the long time, you know, like try to institutionalize the university so that at the end of the day they're able to provide these um, technologies that are being available and, and provide skills to young students so that they are able to solve problems that are happening locally. And the Resilience Academy, um, apart, you, you, we work with um, four components. Uh, the first component is um, accessing to uh, digital geospatial data. And here we're working with um, understanding and collecting the geospatial data sets that are available um, locally so that they, are, they, they can be accessed uh, and be used for, for, for developing different solutions and researches. Uh, the other component that we're working is the, um, the internship program. And this is the program that, that I will, I'll be explaining in details later, uh, where we involve um, the students uh, and train them with different uh, digital skills. Uh, and then expose them to the real case challenges um, so that they're able to learn both their the theoretical and also practical um, skills during the, um, the internship program. We're also working uh, with the research and innovation where we um, use, you know, students who are uh, uh, doing researches are being supported, um, you know, um, with their researches uh, so that they are able to uh, use the skills um, you know, uh, better skills and also tools that uh, can be used uh, with the training materials that have been developed in the Resilience Academy when they are doing their, uh, their researches. Um, and, and here we try to pilot or using all the tools or technologies that, that are being uh, used with the Resilience Academy partnership or community, uh, where these students are therefore uh, able to uh, conduct their researches based on the on their viable tools and, and, and materials, and as well as um, as well as we're able to, to get the data that are collected, um, accessed by everyone, test and seeing the solution that are, are being developed. And the e-learning material component, this is the um, Resilience Academy developing e-learning materials, uh, and we're trying to do that so that it's um, a way to provide um, digital skills um, to university students and also other people who are interested. Um, but these are the, the training that have been kind of uh, given to the students and also provided to the, the university to try to, to build uh, this uh, learning uh, ecosystem uh, using the e-learning uh, materials. So, Working with the universities, um, as I, I said, so the university are a really very important partner in this case, uh, who are being part of the Resilience Academy and they're being able to understand this kind of training and knowledge and skills. Uh, and therefore these uh, experts therefore teach to the university or at the same time trying to learn how this kind of training materials and skills can be embedded into the university um, Curriculum. So it's because this partnership is between the universities, therefore universities are able to learn different experiences, uh, both local and internationally, uh, and how to support the development of skills uh, that can answer the challenge um, or you know local problems that are existing at the moment. So the university part, universities have been um, based on that. We are doing a, a training of the trainers program to university partners. Uh, who have been trained with different kind of skills, uh, and therefore they kind of understand the skills and also learn more about it uh, to be able to provide these skills to the university, um, either from the um, organized programs or within the university programs, uh, where the students are able to therefore get these kind of skills. Um, in the industrial training uh, uh, or youth training program that we have, we try to um, first get the student to understand or to learn about um, the generic skills uh, in classroom. Um, and sometimes because of COVID we've been doing using online, uh, but the, the students are being able to access a classroom training 
where they are trained about the theory of data and data quality uh, before they go to the field. So they get everything uh, lined up or uh, trained um, during or before the field work. Uh, and then after that, they then go to the field. Um, and then they, before they go to the field, uh, these students or these young uh, students, they are able to uh, pilot or test these kind of technologies that have been um, trained uh, before they actually do the actual mapping. Uh, and therefore, they try this, um, they do some mapping exercises within the campus before they go to the field. And uh, during the program, the students are being able to train different kind of tools that are viable. Uh, as, uh, um, and most of these tools, mostly, you know, students have and they have ability to, to access them, like using mobile phone and papers uh, for doing data collection. But after the first, after the training, um, then the students usually go to the field work, the field, and they collect data uh, based on the on the case that is being represented in, in, in each time. Uh, and after that, you know, the the, the students are being able to um, train and also do some data quality checking, um, and um, you know, checking that everything that was collected, removing the like cleaning the data, uh, so that the data that have been developed are therefore are in good shape to be used. Um, and, and therefore, this kind of data that have been developed here um, are added into the um, climate risk database that I, I introduced in the, in the, as a, in a different component. Uh, and the last step that we usually do is where we, after the data map have, have been um, finalized, then we try to involve community so that they are able to also add their, their knowledge um, and share their feedback. Uh, based on what have been collected, uh, depend on the cases. So these are the kind of the steps that students are, are involved uh, when they're working or when they're participating in the Resilience Academy. Uh, they are able to have a full package of training before they go to the field, during the field, and then after the field. And therefore, they're also trained how to, how to involve the community. You could see that all this time um, they gain different type of skills. You know, the skills before they go to the field, the skills during the field work, and then the skills when they try to uh, clean the data and the skills um, that they involve communities to get uh, feedback. So I would like to take you through the some of the cases that 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 we've tried to to um, Used during the field work or during the industrial training program with these these young uh, students, uh, the first case uh, was the case where the students um, digitized uh, the building. Um, and, you know, more than one million buildings um, to identify what's available on the ground. Um, and as I, so I told you, the city changes like rapidly. So this this activity has been done every time. Um, to try to understand, you know, digitizing the existing, but also the updated uh, of the building. Um, this way, you know, the student learn, um, gain skills on the way that, you know, you could collect easily uh, in a very short period of time, um, existing situation like digitizing buildings using the open source, available open source um, imageries. The second case that I wanted to show you today is the case that we did um, using mobile phone. You know, students use mobile phone to collect um, the uh, flood histories. Um, and this was mostly um, involved the community uh, to explain, you know, what are the status of the floods um, uh, in, so that this data that are collected could answer um, as the flood history um, for the for Dar es Salaam. Uh, the third example or the third case that I wanted to share with you today is the drainage condition uh, mapping. Uh, here, the student learned how to use uh, local tools, like you could see the uh, cross uh, cross timber, um, which is um, pinned with meters or like measurements, and then they're able to use these kind of tools to. Um, to collect, uh, you know, drainage conditions um, in the city. Uh, and uh, the, the important here, as I told you, is to try to, you know, the students are able to gain the skills, um, you know, you, how to, to use the local tools that they have uh, to be able to understand the challenge that, that, that they have locally. 
Um, so if the student are able to gain these kind of skills, uh, they will keep these skills with them uh, and be able to use them when, when they are working or they are, um, they are in the decision-making stage. Uh, the next case that I wanted to show with you today is the um, students uh, participated um, to collect uh, soil samples uh, in the whole Dar es Salaam in order to understand the, in order to identify the soil type and to understand the morphology of the city uh, due to the problem that the city had, uh, like flooding. So this, this activity exposed students with the skills uh, of you of collecting the you know the methodology of collecting the soil samples the way that you analyze the soil samples and the way that you know you define the, the morphology of the city so the whole activity really involved the student um from the before they do the data collection during the data collection and after that uh, to produce the map that shows uh the you know soil samples in the whole city and the way that this uh, represents in the other morphology of the city. The fifth case here is that the students were exposed to understand um, by participating into the, to understand the, 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 the tree uh, and greening um, of the city. So they participated into digitizing of the tree points and also canopy cover uh, of trees in the city so that to identify the, the greening of the city. Um, and you can see that, you know, this, this activity involved the students to doing digitization in class. Uh, and also they went to the field to collect this kind of tree, um, tree mapping. Uh, so the students were exposed in this case on the way that, you know, uh, tree mapping could be done, uh, you know, what tools could be used. Uh, and, and mostly, you know, the mobile phone is very important tool that they, they learn that this could be used. Uh, and, you, you know, other local tools that, that, that could be done. Uh, so the student gained these kind of skills so that, um, you know, having this kind of skills, they are able to understand how to collect um, the tree mapping, you know, and also um, to, to understand how is the greening of the city in case they are needed to do that in their future uh, job. And the uh, sixth um, sample, uh, if I just quickly finalize, uh, is to show that the student who are exposed in understanding or involving the community after the mapping was done as a way to develop the narrative, um, city narrative from the community, uh, and therefore identify how the community thinks um, on the challenges that are faced um, locally. So, so the idea here is the student then understand how to involve the community, how to facilitate the community, and therefore what are the you know what are the output that that community could could bring, um, you know what narrative could be integrated with the you know information that are given by the community to develop maps that will be useful to the community. So uh, this this could be very useful skills that student or young people could learn before they go to, to work. So um, this is just to show you um, the, uh, you know, that the data that was collected from the, um, during the industry training um, was combined, um, you know, from the earth observation or drone imagery data that was collected to the household feedback that was collected by the students and also the participatory design and community narrative that was done by the community to develop flood modeling. Flood modeling tool as an output is very technical output, you know, but the data that was, was done to develop that comes from the combination of students, data collection, and also community feedback. So you could see that these tools or these data that are collected, they are very powerful. Uh, they are done through the providing skill to students, but the output could be very, it could be used in a very technical, um, technical output, as, as you can see in this example. The other example that I would like to show is that the students, um, you know, few students were selected after they participated in the program to be able to participate into the uh, microtasking uh, pilot project that we did um, to uh, verify or to identify, verify uh, 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 building footprints of Dar es Salaam uh, and other cities in Africa. Uh, so the student participated using mobile phone to verify this building's uh, footprint. Um, and uh, they were able to be paid. It was during the COVID-19. Um, it, uh, it was done during the COVID-19 
uh, pandemic. Uh, so it, it was really an online um, work where students participated online, they worked online, and they were able to be paid using mobile payment. Um, and, and so this is where the students really gain the skills of understanding that the skills that are provided during the Resilience Academy program could be therefore very useful into um, opportunity, job opportunities uh, like this micropayment that we've done or the or are there many other examples that, that, that could be told uh, out there uh, where the student, because they have this kind of skills, um, they're able to participate and get paid uh, it's like a job opportunity uh, with the skills that you have. You could see in this example of microtasking where like 100 students, 100 students participated uh, for only one month, uh, more than 1,050 data um, was collected. And all the students were happy afterwards differently. You know, some were happy because they participated and they gained money. Some were happy because they learned more skills about using mobile phone to do the actual work. And some were, you know, um, gained skills on, on how to use uh, the mobile phone to understand the, the word footprint um, data, etc. So everyone was impacted differently. Um, but this is how the student, therefore, could be using the skills that they have um, to gain or to get job. So to finalize, um, this is my, my last slide, um, is that um, the result of the, 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 the student internship or the participation or this, the skill development uh, to young students is that it exposes them to, to the skills, to the skills that Otherwise, maybe they could have not get it because the world is changing very fast. So if they're able to get this kind of skills, then they are very updated when they are out to, to, to job market. Because if they are trained with other with skills that are not relevant, depend on the market uh, need, it would not be possible to have um, to be able to uh, get opportunity to work, you know, for example, using mobile phone for uh, employment or get work, work micro work, micro work uh, with online uh, opportunities, et cetera. Uh, and the other result is that um, through this way, you are able to collect data every year, every time, you know, because you have student who is eager to learn these kind of simple tools. Uh, at the same time, they are doing the actual work. So you're able to collect and update data every time uh, with the city that are changing very, uh, very fast in affordable way in a very short period of time. Um, and they're also, you know, as I said, the students are able to collect data that could be, you know, verified and, valid, you know, valid for developing very technical um, output. At the same time, they're able to learn this kind of, um, of work. And it's an opportunity for them to, um, to understand and learn uh, so that they are able to be employed on the, on the same field. Um, and also, if maybe I finalize the last one, um, it provides awareness to, to, to these young students um, so that they know, you know what are the challenges that they have and what are the tools that could be used to solve this challenge. I think this is a very powerful way uh, if the young people are being empowered by developed, you know, empowered by tools that are needed to solve the challenge that they are already kind of exposed to, uh, it's very powerful when they have an uh, opportunity to solve these challenges. They know these tools, so they can work intensively to try to develop solutions locally and also sustain the, um, the project and the solution uh, locally. So thank you so much. Asante San. Uh, thank you, Mr. Likale. Um, it, we went a little bit long and we have, I think, very short time for questions and answers. I'm going to quickly read the questions uh, to you. Um, there are two questions on when you list. Are you planning to expand to other regions with the program? And did you have indicators on local capacity building of the students? Are there examples of student groups expanding their work past the program? If you can quickly uh, yeah. provide answers to those. Yes, so the, at the moment, we've been expanding locally. We, we started with two universities uh, in Tanzania. Then, uh, you know, there was an expansion with the universities um, joining the partnership with the Resilience Academy. So now we have four universities, but we have other universities added. So locally, that's the plan. But, you know, how we expand that depends on the funding and the possibility of the need for that. 
Um, and the way that this program is being done is through the partnership, um, partnership way. So each university is equal in the program. Um, so we are able to provide skill to young students, but at the same time, we're providing the institution, we're, we're making the institution themselves in the way that they're able to adapt this kind of technology and tools and embed them in the, in the, in the normal providing skills. We have some cases where the student who participate in the industrial training or in, the, in our program, working the university and they're using the mobile phones. We have cases where students are, are being developing their own organization based on the experience that they got from, the, from, from our program. So that is what I could answer from what the question you asked. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you want to uh, ask more questions to Msili Kale, uh, I invite you to do so uh, via chat, uh, getting in touch with him through Venulus. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm just going to now um, add uh, our next presenter, Federica Gaspari, to the screen. Uh, to the screen. So thank you. Thank you, Msili Kale.